Good afternoon, uh, I'm Mary Cooch and the title of the session is Moodle, it's not as scary as you think. Um, just by way of an introduction then, I kind of wear several hats at the moment. My oldest and if you like my dearest hat is a secondary school teacher. I've also recently um, started in recent years to do some primary liaison. So I've taught for 25 years at a high school in Preston, mainly languages and a bit of geography. Recently too I've also done some work with year fives and year sixes in our feeder primary schools, helping them, they work on our Moodle. And since about 2007, 2008, I've also been taken off the main teacher timetable and I do training um, for a training company based in my school, our learning, and also a little bit of work for Synergy Learning too, basically going out and showing teachers and businesses, anyone who will have me, how to use Moodle. And then my hobby hat, if you like, is um, I just like to go on the Moodle forums to answer the questions, write books about Moodle, blog about Moodle, make screencasts about Moodle, basically eat, sleep and breathe Moodle. So what I would like to show you today is a little bit of things that I've learned along the way to make Moodle a little bit less scary. The, the, the title was actually inspired by a teacher in a middle school in Redditch that I went to do some training at last year. And um, at the end of the afternoon, this lady came up to me and said, oh, thank you very much. It, it's not as scary as I thought. And I thought, well, not only is that a really lovely thing to have said to you, but actually it does reflect the fact that not everyone who has to learn Moodle is as, as competent in ICT and as keen and enthusiastic as we are. And it's sometimes a, a battle, if you like, uh, to enthuse and to engage the, these people who, whether they want to or not, have to learn Moodle. And I'm actually going to use the battle analogy a little bit. Um, if you like, the, the, the teachers are the foot soldiers in the front line. I'm going to focus on mostly. But also the importance of your rear guard, back, background support, if you like. Our teachers uh, in the chalk face, we don't use chalk, as you know, but you know, the interactive whiteboard face is not quite the same ring about it. But they're the ones, really, who we need to, to help in order for Moodle to be a success. And I think one of the things to bear in mind is you should always be sensitive to their individual backgrounds. I mean, when, when as a teacher, when I deal with pupils, we, we call it baggage, you know, the baggage that they bring into the classroom. It's the same for users who are new to Moodle, not just teachers, but any kind of users. I mean, two examples here, two extreme examples. Um, very often, I will go to sessions and and it's always a woman. It's never a man, right? It's always a woman, and she'll come in and she'll say, oh, I'm, I'm special needs, I am. Just, 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 just be gentle with me. You'll lose me in the first 10 minutes, but don't worry, don't worry. I'm special needs. And she always does much, much better than she thinks or she claims she would by the end. It's just a way of, you just have to be gentle. On the other hand, actually, not always in schools, but in, in, in other enterprises where I've, I've trained people, and, and quite often on the Moodle forums as well, you'll get someone who'll come in, and this, paradoxically, this is always a man, and it's never a woman. And he will come in and he'll say, um, well, I, I am completely new, new to Moodle, I've not used Moodle before, but I've got a background in web design, and I'm pretty hot on PHP, and I've, I've got my own setup on my server, you know, the Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, Linux, whatever, but I'm just trying to code, I'm just trying to code the front page at the moment, if you can help me get the files off the server, because I had a bit of text and image. And I'm saying, no, 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 you don't have to do any coding. Just go into the front page settings, click include a topic section, and you can have it. And they're like, oh, right. It's almost as if some people, if you like, are too clever for Moodle, and they need to lower themselves and be aware that it, it, it's not made for these people who have this technical website background. And sometimes that can be a disadvantage, and you've got to think more along the special needs line. Uh, the other thing that has become very apparent to me is that I don't know everything. I might know about the, the, the technical side of it, but in terms of what people want, I, I, I don't know. And there's a great example. This is a rural school, tiny school, in the back of beyond on the way to Lancaster. And they called me in in February and they said um, they wanted to show us how to use a chat room for our year five, which is like nine year olds. And I said, no, 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 we don't. I said, yes, we do, we do. I said, look, I've actually switched off the chat room at my school because all it does, no educational value, all it does is they go on it and they say, hiya, and then someone else goes on and they go, hiya, and then they beep you, which is really annoying. And they said, yes, yes, that's exactly what we want. 
So I'll let them explain it themselves. This is a good example of how I should be more humble and listen to what people want. Do basically, if you know my secrets, 
here is a spark grid be um, linked to a website. Just a simple click here to go to a website. It revolutionized my life because for years, when I finally, I've been at this school since 1985, when we finally got the internet in a classroom, I'd take them in and I would write on the board the website and then all the pupils would be typing the website address in and then they'd type it into Google and it wouldn't work and then they'd find out where to type it in properly. Page not found and it'd waste 10 minutes of the lesson. And for the teachers to learn that if they do it in Moodle and all the pupils have to do is click here and they're straight on it, it's actually, for non-technical people, a huge revelation and they think, oh, it's come up, it's worked. Next one I do is in Moodle 1.9 called Compose the Web Page. Much better in Moodle 2, just the page. And that is a simple way of showing information. Yeah, um, typing it in if that's if you just wanted to read something. Or, uh, with a huge caveat, yes I know, pasting it in. And the reason that I show them this is because if they can do that, which is dead simple, they're only one step away from doing the online text assignment. And there, what you're doing is you're actually getting, you're doing a web page with information, then you're getting your children to type the answer back. So they are actually hands on back. And it's, if you can get things that the pupils are doing, instead of statically reading the web links of the web page, they're going to want to keep coming back. So I'll finish off with another perfect example of something that minimal input but maximum result, which is a forum. Uh, again, very easy to set up. I prefer the single simple discussion because then they can't go off at a tangent. They can only reply to what you want, to, want them to talk about. Uh, I haven't shown them yet how to upload all their wonderful PowerPoints or Word documents. Of course it's important. Of course, with longer time, I will show them that and how to zip them up as well, which you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't realize you can and spend hours uploading them individually. But I do have a handout, uh, double-sided A4. And on the one side, it says, get your work on Moodle, the modern way, the easy way, which is the web page. And on the other side, the old-fashioned way, still as good, but if you want to do it that way, fine. And that's where I show them how to upload their Word documents and so on. Um, handouts always, um, it, is, it is important. I've never known quite how to deal with it. Personally, I would like to play that many people feel comfortable writing things down and reading it. And I know, I'm under no illusion, no way are these people ever going to spend money and read a book about Moodle. They, they've got lives, they don't want to. So, what I do is I have a Moodle course. And if I, can, if I have admin control of the Moodle, I'll put it on for them. If not, I'll give it on a USB pen to the, to the person who does. And it's got little screen caps for those people who like to watch the mouse and follow it. And single side A4 printable help sheets that they can look at and follow. Keeping it simple, really. Another thing that works really well, again, not my idea, is if I have a bit longer, for the first 15, 20 minutes or so, put them in a course as a student and they can see how the activities work from the student's point of view. And this actually is a good icebreaker and also it can get very, very competitive because I like to put a quiz on. Um, I usually do a Spanish quiz because they don't all speak Spanish, so that's a bit of excitement. And then they can get a lot of rivalry between teachers in departments as to who's got the highest quiz if you use that quiz results block. Dead simple and works quite effectively. I haven't actually ever trained Johnny Depp, I have to say, but he does remind me of something else that, that's nicely worked out, which is that, um, wherever possible, I like to know the names of the people who are going to learn Moodle in advance, so I can give them real accounts, as opposed to the sort of generic delegate one or teacher one. But I don't always get the names in advance. So, again, I learned this from a lady on the French-speaking Moodle forums, Moodle.org, and what she does is she has little cards with names of celebrities, and then she hands them out at the beginning, and so you never know whether you're going to be um, George Clooney or Martin Clunes or, um, you know, Kate Moss or Barbara Windsor, and, uh, and it's quite fun, and at least then I've got some names, and they know who they are. You see them in the different topic sections there. Um, <coughs> a lot of people who, who uh, show people how to use Moodle, I'm always wary of saying Moodle training, because I don't um, so, show people how to use Moodle. Uh, they give each person their own course, which is good, because they've got a lot of freedom, they can alter all the settings. But it's a bit lonely, so unless I have loads of them, 
I like to put them in one cup so they can see everything else that other people are doing and they can interact with each other. They can go and look at the choices. They can type on their forums and it's, it's more convivial. And also in the real world, they probably are going to be working with another teacher or tutor on the same course and they can see things changing. You might have realized that that's actually a Moodle 2 course where I'm going to come to next. How best to present Moodle 2 to people who are reasonably comfortable with 1.9 and then are moving on. Um, I've done a fair bit of training on Moodle 2 for people who've never done it before and they don't have any issues. But from what I gather, the issues are people who are moving from 1 to 2. Just as a really, really um, unstatistical straw poll, ask some teachers just to play on my Moodle Fairies Moodle 2 for a few weeks for you and then to give me the thoughts. Uh, secondary school teachers, primary school teachers. So here's just a few of their initial impressions. I didn't give, I didn't tell them anything. I just gave them a course and said, go and play. Okay. I have to be is not what I expected and I thought is it perhaps because that's not the kinds of things that they do uh, are they more used to the interactive activities that it's not a problem I only got one person who was worried about this 
from a different school, and maybe that's because in his school that is the way they operate. He was too shy to come on camera, but he did actually agree to speak. So here are his concerns for you to listen to. I'm an administrator for a new used by a church of England high school in Lancashire. My school has used Moodle enthusiastically since 2007. I really like Moodle 2.0 Scotland feature for admin and the course notes. And the personal files option is very useful indeed. We will make much use of it. My real issue with 2.0 is the way you bring the files associated with the course. In 1.9, there is a logic that only the files from the admin block. File management for teachers and administrators is perhaps less easy in 2.0. I do have concerns that teachers will have to use this, and coercing or encouraging teachers to use it is perhaps the hardest nut to crack. The hardest nut to crack? So how can we crack it? How can we make the move, particularly with the files? from 1.9 into 2. I think we have to emphasize the usefulness of the new private files facility where you can store your own files when you're ready to show them to your class. You get them from there and you put them on the central page. There's another workaround. You and your colleagues can have a folder to put your files in, hide it, and then get your files from there. There is, and um, very contentious, but there is the old course files back under a new name, legacy course files, if you're really desperate. I didn't switch it on when I had those teachers training, and they didn't miss it. But it's there, but again, it, it does have backup restore issues and so on. But to me, I think, and those teachers um, playing with it for me proved it all the more. The main thing is we should try and change the mindset. Moving from 1.92 is a great opportunity, again, to re-emphasize the fact that it's not just about putting on and folding your files. And that's where the rear guard can come in, the background support to those teachers. For instance, words with the odd kipling. I am by calling a dealer in words, and words are the most powerful drug known to mankind. I'm a big fan of changing the language. Language editing in 1.9, language customization in, one, in Moodle 2, to make it more teacher, student, tutor, pupil, user friendly. They've gone a little bit towards that in Moodle 2. They've changed this word directory to folder. They've changed text or web page simply to page. The mere thought of composing a web page put a lot of teachers off because they didn't want to do that. But do a page, yeah, I can do that. We have kind of taken a backward step in that now they call a, um, a website a URL. And believe me, not everyone knows what a URL is. But if you're the administrator, you can change the words to make them fit. And, and that, that's already uh, starting on a positive bent. You're on the set. Your pupils, again, not, not my idea, not you. Digital leaders, pupil Moodlers, student Moodlers, train some of your pupils to use Moodle with, as the teaching right, and they can help the teachers. Your teacher gets stuck in a class because they can't remember how to get the password for a new pupil who's come in. The pupil Moodlers know they learn it much quicker and much better than teachers. So get them on board. And I know they'll never go and ask questions on the forums because they have a life, unlike me, but something on Moodle.org that is very useful, particularly if you are going to move to Moodle 2, is that you can get, you can download it on your network, you can get Mount Orange School, which is a, a, a real school experience with students, teachers, activities, and they can go and they can look and they can see the other kinds of things that you can do that aren't putting on your PowerPoints. And um, a luxury, I know it's a luxury. See those there, that's from our GCSE quest, and there are a lot of scorn packs. And uh, we have a, a technical assistant, Emma, she does the tweets on the R Learning Twitter account. And part of her job is just to upload scorn packs, PowerPoints, past paper folders, the drudgery, the mundane tasks that teachers, the admin tasks that teachers shouldn't necessarily have to do, so that they then, they can focus on the more interactive tasks and they can sit back and fill with a cup of coffee and perhaps then becoming a little bit more aware that Moodle is not as scary as we think. And I don't know where I'm on for time, but I'll finish now. Okay? Oh, thank you.
can talk to me afterwards if you like, because we, we've got time, haven't we, which is nice, really.